Over 20 years ago, I finished my film about artist Joe Benyon. It was a project that taught me how to be a filmmaker and form friendships that will be with me and my family forever. Joe? Hi, Steve. Hi, how are you? I figure the best way to attack this is just no plans whatsoever. Mm -hmm. This fires with wood, can you believe it? It's uh, been firing this kill about 10 or 12 years. It's my favorite new toy. It's fun. do you think? You play with fire when you were little? Yeah. Yeah, you ever get in trouble? I think I got away with it. Do you ever go to the police station, have your fingerprints taken and mug shot? That's what happened to you? Uh, you? Tell me about it. I was 11 years old. I was playing with fire, it got away from me. And the police and the fire department came and hauled me off. In order to be a successful potter, one must be a closet pyromaniac. When did we make that film? 1990. One. I think I finished it in two. Yeah, you finished it in two, but we started it in one. It, you took 18 months. Exactly. And then you uh, screened it in 93. 93 Sundance. Sundance. Sundance 93. So I asked Joe, I, I want to do this film about you, and what did you say? Right. So we can be famous like the Beatles. So. And you, being... Steve Olpen were not deterred and kept coming back. Yep. Focused, dedicated. Look at that. Buns and wieners. Okay, now tell me about this kid. This is Ada Lee. She, by the way, ooh, beef, Kirkland. Yeah. Uh, she is the very best one. Hear that, Zion and Louisa? Best one. You're the very best Ada we got. What's it like having? Funky artist A and funky artist B as parents. It's awesome. They're uh, very accepting of whatever decisions I make, whether I'm making art or not. Um, and they're pretty supportive. Did you see this on this film on and off, like as you were growing up in mm -hmm. art classes or anything? Tell me about that. Yeah, and I'd meet people that were taking uh, pottery classes at other schools and stuff like that, and they'd know about the potter's meal, and they're always surprised connecting the dots. That, oh, you're the potato girl. So I think, that, I think that scene stands out for a lot of people. Nice. <laughs> Cut to the potato scene right now. Exactly. Cut, Cut to. Or do you have to fill the, feed the kill? I have to feed the kill. Okay. It's my baby. Kid. My Ada. She's pretty awesome. She's the best one. You have the job of updating the other two girls that will not be in the update. Zina is working for Wasatch Academy as a, a, like a recruiter, administrator type. And as we speak, she's uh, somewhere between Marseille and Rome traveling to school fairs. And she just spent two days in Marseille with Louisa, the oldest, the, you know, the girl with the guitar. Remember that one? Uh, she lives in France, up in the mountains, in an uh, as yet unnamed little cute village, Hamlet really, where she's a musician. She makes Irish music and uh, hangs out and is basically unemployed like her parents. We're proud of her. Sina got a real job with uh, benefits and retirement and all that, but you know, you can't win them all. Just, just like a little cutaway, you know? <laughs> you guys can get in a fight or something. Yeah! They're wonderful kids. Uh, Zina went to Sarah Lawrence College, got an undergraduate degree there, and 
and uh, Louisa went to Cornell, got a, I think a BFA in creative writing. It might not have been a BFA, but I think it was. Whatever, creative writing program. And they all tolerated very well having unconventional parents with no jobs. And uh, yeah, it's nice, they're good kids. Everyone should have girls like that. Yeah. You do. Yeah. Yeah. And if your daughters have influenced my kids, there you go. Have they? Yes. Well, it's well, Zina especially. Especially because of all the time together. Zina and Quinn. Zina and Quinn are like sisters or something. Yeah. Zina, by the way, is also the very best one. Oh my god. Yeah. I just... I heard that. You had not run the Grand Canyon that I, that I know of before we filmed the film. I was, I was a whitewater virgin when we filmed before. Okay, tell me about that journey you've taken. Well... We got invited to go on a Grand Canyon river trip in 1992, so right about the time the squeal was, uh, or the potter's meal, excuse me, right about the time the potter's meal was still being filmed and edited, right? Anyway, that summer we went down the Grand Canyon with some friends and uh, got totally owned by the river. And for 10 years, we went down every year with the girls down the Grand Canyon. And then about 10 years ago, I started guiding in the Grand Canyon when I turned 50. And uh, I've been doing that for 10 years, which tells you I'm an old guy now. You're not 60. I'm 60. So it's been 20 years of pottery making and river running and uh, older getting. Older getting? I got a stoke here. Got a stoke, please. What do you remember from the first time we watched the film together? I just remember that you, it seemed like you were really touched and maybe you thought this was some goofy film student that was going to do this hokey thing and you, I think you thought that it captured Joe really well. Yeah, I was impressed. Thanks. <laughs> I was really hoping that it would turn out for you and it did, so I was, I was really happy and it, you know, it's been a great thing for Joe and it was been a great thing for you, so... It was nice to see that all work out. It doesn't always work out so good, you know, but it did. You're both on. I don't need, I have no questions. Just answers. Give us answers. <laughs> why are you here? <laughs> why Why are you still taking pictures of us? Okay. Haven't you found anything more interesting to do in 23 or 22 years? Yeah. You two are a big part of my artistic journey. That's so. right. I taught you how to make pots. Right. If you didn't know how to make pots, you couldn't have made the potter's meal. I know, exactly. You, know, you had to have that, that, that inside, you know. You taught me to marry someone awesome. I did teach you to marry someone awesome that is a little edgy, but really, really pretty. Yeah. Yeah, that's what you did. You got really nice kids now. Beautiful children. Yeah. You, you, got, you got boys, even. And now, yeah. you and too. When, when we made the f that film, you were like really young and all that. Now you look like Owen, open. Totally. So, so we're filming uh, Joe at the kill, and I didn't get around to filming any of his pots, so I thought I would film some of the ones I've collected over the years. And these are the kids, my kids. Okay, so this pot right here, Hold that one, Matt. That one is actually from the movie. This is the pot that he takes out in the final scene. Let's see the bottom of it. Cool.
also in a class I'm taking right now for getting, it's basically a class getting kids ready to go out into the real world as artists. It's called sophomore seminars. We had to prepare and put on a, an art talk for the class, talking about ourselves as artists, our development and everything. And I actually had a section on you as one of my major inspirations for why I've chosen to get into photography because when I was a little kid and you were filming the potter's meal you were the movie guy and you were like a god to me you were my biggest idol for years and years and years and I thought I was going to be a BMX rider I thought I was going to make movies about you still can make movies I will yeah but I thought I mean you you definitely set my my path on cameras a long time ago but it was you hanging out with the movie guy that first got me interested in playing with cameras now it's paying off nice and by the way her work is amazing we're going to cut to we'll just cut to a couple of shots of your work right now I made this little film that you are watching to look back at the potter's meal, a film that shaped me as a filmmaker and altered my worldview. I also wanted to show you the family that I fell in love with during the process and give a little update. The famous documentary filmmaker Albert Maisel said, The film is sort of the beginning of a love affair between the filmmakers and the subjects. Some filmmakers make targets of the subjects they film. That's not our way. I've always liked that quote. It's good. So in a perfect world, when I am done making a film about you, we've both learned a little, we have new friends, and we are on each other's Christmas card list. So now, click here, and you can watch The Potter's Meal in three parts. Thank you very much.